Today we are going to talk about the woman in data science and we actually have an upcoming conference coming our way and also we're going to talk about some women in leadership as well. So what better way to do that than talking uh, to some amazing women in leadership and data science. Uh, we are very excited because coming up uh, on March 5th is Stanford's Stanford University's Women in Data Science Conference is happening all over the world, um, but we have our own version of it taking place here in Ottawa. And it's exciting because we have so many people talking about it, and that's why, not just because it is a great event, but also because of just the topic itself, just because of the industry itself. So here next to me, I have the lady behind coordinating this awesome opportunity and event and just to talk and bring some phenomenal women together. Uh, Alison Gaffney from Gaffney Consulting and also Lenovis, thank you so much for coming today. I want to hear a little bit from you. Um, and actually, before we get into that, let me just introduce the rest of the amazing women I have here. Um, Nagar, uh, we have from Element AI. Did I say that right? Okay, perfect. And then, of course, we have Somas from Shopify. And then, of course, Zainab, which is uh, Currently studying civil engineering with the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Ottawa. I remember that. And she's also my co-host today. And they are also, the Faculty of Engineering is supporting Techopia and also, once again, facilitating these conversations. So thank you so much for being here today. So, Alison, let's talk a little bit about this event. Tell me why. Why did you decide, apart from all the other things that you're doing and the busy life that you're leading, why should this conference take place and why did you think Ottawa it should come to Ottawa? Um, well, I've always been involved in high tech, 20 years in high tech. I've always worked globally and I have a global network. And when my Stanford um, contact reached out and spoke about this event about women, female data scientists or experts in the field of technology uh, present to an audience, uh, they started this three years ago. And in three years, they have 80 sites around the world doing this, holding these events and 100,000 uh, attendees watching the video streams. Um, and, and the reason they have only females presenting, men and women are in the audience, and we do have men and women in our audience, because people want more women to go into um, the STEM programs, and it's important that the, the girls and other women see themselves on stage. And to get on stage for conferences and to present your knowledge and your research, it's really your network that invites you. And unfortunately, the network predominantly is men. So men invite men to present at conferences. Um, and it behooves us all to get more women presenting, giving the visibility to their work and their research, because we just need more women involved. And what I say is, actually, there are a lot of women who've already educated, mm -hmm. they're working in it, they're just not getting that visibility. So I wanted to give them that visibility. It's been huge. We have almost 250 people interested in attending. We've got IT World Canada will be doing a live stream to their 1 million plus contacts. We'll have numerous sponsors already engaged. We have obviously very, very smart ladies who will be presenting. And the theme I chose was artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Canada has made a statement, a policy statement saying we want to be leaders in AI. Mm -hmm. And AI was started with us. The other policy statement is we, we need to get more girls and women into STEM. And what's interesting about the conference that I've organized is the, the some of the ladies you know, I, I don't know. I'm not AI. I'm a mechanical engineer by education. I don't work in AI. I work in blockchain. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is three of the speakers are from Iran. Who are, and in Iran, they tell me, 50% of the of, uh, computer science students are females. Wow. They were shocked that when they came to Canada, it's only like 10 or 20%. Wow. So there's culturally, Iran seems to have it correctly. Why is in Canada? Mm -hmm. You know, why aren't the girls going into it? So it's just an opportunity. I'll have high school students there, university students there, five recruiters, headhunters, because everybody's looking for a bunch of AIs mm -hmm. um, or data scientists. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really the conference. Somebody said to me, it's epic. Mm -hmm. And they just view this as an epic event to, to be there. So I love it. That's great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for clarifying that for us. Now, I'm going to pass it over a little bit to my co-host here, Zainab. So why don't you share with us the questions you might have for, for our panelists here? Yeah, so thank you, Carlos. So I will start with the first question for Somaz. We'll turn to my right over here. Um, so you are from Shopify, and I just wanted to see if you can give me a couple of examples of how data science is at and being used in Shopify. 
Thank you, Zainab. Uh, so at Shopify, our mission is to make commerce better for everyone. Uh, we allow people to sell their products online, offline. We encourage them to be entrepreneurs. Now, when you want to become an entrepreneur, you have to learn many things. You have to be master of many things. And what we have, the approach we have taken with AI is two uh, folds. The first fold is that we take the mundane and repetitive and boring tasks out of the merchant's daily life. And with our capabilities, with scale, with the data and the computational power we have, we use AI to make those easy and automated for them. One of the examples is that my team over the last two years has spent significant amount of work and time and we've had amazing results in solving the fraud, uh, order fraud problem for our merchants. So for every order that comes through Shopify platform for over 600,000 merchants, uh, we uh, basically in real time assess the risk of the order being fraudulent or not. And we use machine learning and data for doing that. Um, so that's one of the avenues. The other avenue is we use machine learning AI and data to create opportunities. So another product we have that uh, embodies this is our cash advance program where we give merchants cash to help them grow their business and we only take money back when they make sales and they become successful. So in this product, it's very important to give money to the right people at the right time for the right amount and have some sort of confidence that they would be able to return that money. So again, this is one of the cases that we use machine learning and AI and then 100% uh, of actually the money we extend is now coming through AI. So uh, it's really interesting because as a company, we recognize that that's something that we invest in and we uh, want to grow. And uh, the other fact is like we want to give back to the community. So we are one of the sponsors and um, working with Vector Institute when we are uh, giving them money for the next five years to help them just train the next set of amazing data scientists and give back to the community that way as well. Beautiful. Thank you very much. That's exciting. Um, now, for you, Negar, if you want to, you, you, what's amazing about you is that you travel all the way from Montreal to be here with us. So it's super awesome that you've made the time to come at you with Element AI and now Clearly, as Alison just mentioned, there is you know, maybe a disconnect with how many uh, people we have in, the, uh, in data science at this point in time, especially from a female perspective, but also AI obviously is getting a lot of attention for yourself and for your company and even also the industry that you've been in. Why do you see there's such a boom in AI and maybe how are you know, Element AI or even yourself kind of positioning yourself for that, for that boom? Uh, actually, mm, machine learning and AI in general got so much attention initially because of uh, computational power and also the amount of data that we have recently. People were working on that for a long time ago, from a long time ago, and we had so like there were so much interesting works coming out, but it uh, became it came to the news after like. Uh, the computational power improved and we could kind of like make a good correlation between um, industry and academy. Uh, one of the one of the interesting aspects of Element AI is uh, kind of binding um, academy and um, industry together. So it's like Element AI is, uh, uh, is a company which uh, is focused on product and provides machine learning as a product to other businesses and industries and we have a network of fellow members who are from different universities and we have a fundamental research lab. I'm a research scientist there and work, I'm working on research and we have, a, we have an applied research lab and um, there is a correlation between all these labs and the dev team um, to provide um, machine learning for all kinds of businesses. Now, you are going to be at this conference and you are going to speak there as well. Um, I'd love for you to give the audience just an idea of kind of what you're going to touch base on and uh, same here as well, maybe something that you're going to speak of. Give us a little taste of what's to come. Thank you. Uh, so basically my background is on computer vision using machine learning. So I'm really interested in understanding, uh, in helping machines to understand the world better by, um, by seeing the world and understanding the semantic between what's happening in the world. Um, and my field of, my actually um, field of interest is mostly video understanding. So I will be talking about that and also about Element AI and how we are doing this at Element AI. Um, and I would like to also talk about uh, women in machine learning as well, and women in artificial intelligence and 
why do I think that uh, we need to have this kind of events uh, and also address this unconscious biases that exist and why it's important to um, promote the work of women and like basically we, we need to uh, like the fact is that uh, many times as uh, Alison mentioned uh, there is a conference going on there is a workshop um, people are inviting friends or colleagues uh, in the circle of their friends so sometimes women are underrepresented because of this reason so we would like to have this kind of events to uh, raise their voice Can I take an answer too? <laughs> I'm not speaking, I'm just introducing yeah. everybody. But another thing that, that we were just uh, outside discussing, and I'm also a business advisor for a lady who's leading, uh, she calls it the top 60 over 60, because yeah. she got tired of the top 40 under 40 and top that. 50 and 50, right? Got that, yeah. And what I was asking uh, the pan different panelists, I said, can anybody learn to code? Can anybody become this? And they said, absolutely. And it, it's interesting about ageism in that maybe if, if Canada's making this statement saying we've got to become leaders in AI, it's great to, you know, because I'm also Technovation, which is training young girls. Uh, it's great to do that. But if you look at it, um, and you're talking about the unbiased consciousness, if we look at the entire gamut of the Canadian culture and the Canadian people, Maybe there's, it's bigger that we can expand this AI knowledge within this company, it, within this country, sorry. So yes, I've brought the, the women around and, and uh, 250 people in the room, men and women, but it's interesting on the AI dialogue that I think will happen during the conference is how actually can we get more people involved and you don't have to just be female, you don't have to just be man, mm -hmm. you don't just have to be young to do this. Yeah. You could become it uh, as you're getting older and it could be uh, what you want to do in your retirement years. Absolutely. So well, that'll go. be a discussion. That'll be great. So, so Maz, um, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for adding to that. So give us a little idea of what's coming. And then I guess I should just ask one more question before I have another question for you, Zena. Um, you know, uh, why, why did you feel you really wanted to be involved in this conference? Maybe just ask, add that as well. For sure, thank you. Um, so why, what I'm going to talk about, I see this uh, event as uh, having two purposes. One of them is to aspire people, to make them see that uh, people similar like to, that look like you or have the same characteristics as you have been successful in this field. Like I've been able to take the knowledge that I got in grad school, building predictive models back into Shopify, being able to be in a role that I can scale this so they can help other people use it. So that's the aspiring part. And just tell them about the things, that, uh, how we use it in Shopify in a applied manner. The other part is educate because I think while the buzz around AI and machine learning is great and it makes you get lots of uh, job opportunities but at the other side I want it to be approachable because I think everyone can learn, everyone can uh, add to the field and you don't need to be uh, deep researchers uh, to not only you need you don't need to be only deep researchers to add value you can add value by adding your perspective or by just learning how to use this tool in whatever else you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason I get involved is actually like I uh, I really care about uh, having more women and more uh, di diverse opinions in everything, in the problems we solve and in the people who we solve problems for. So for example, uh, myself and actually I'm lucky because Shopify also deeply cares about this, but for example this year in the National Day for Learning to Code, uh, we had the, the Shopify office for the Ottawa headquarter. And I taught uh, people an introduction to machine learning and AI. So the most beautiful thing was actually at the end of the day, someone who was a lawyer um, pulled some data from uh, open government uh, and then uh, looked at like the distribution of fines for import and export. Uh, so to me, that's them using something uh, so approachable for doing what they need. And that's why I want, I want more of that. I want more capabilities like that present. Love it, love it, love it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, Zainab, for you, um, I know also coming up is, uh, Women in Leadership Conference as well, which is a big aspect. So here we are, we have Women in Data Science, we have Women in Leadership as well. Um, maybe you can give us a little idea of what's happening at that event and maybe why that is, why both of these are so of interest to you. You know, why it's great to hear women in data and science to get together, why it's great also, you know, why you're studying what you're studying and why you're enjoying being a part of this program and of course maybe even why the Women in Leadership is such a great event as well. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my background is civil engineering and uh, you know you, you recognize that there is a lot less women in engineering in general in tech uh, and I work in a makerspace so if you're familiar with the concept of a makerspace it's uh, a place where you can prototype, fabricate. So it's very interesting to see how everything's kind of expanding 
So we work a lot with 3D printing, VR, AR, and I'm, I'm hearing a lot of uh, artificial intelligence here, so it's uh, very wonderful. And so I've kind of always been interested in tech, so I'm very curious about this event. And I also want to talk about a little bit of the Women in Leadership Summit. So that will be happening on Monday, March 5th, so that's next Monday. And uh, we'll be having, it's for, to help us, you know, empower women on the reasons of why and how. So women often face a lot of difficulties in, you know, in the structural workplace in getting higher and getting out there. So this can help with that in, in terms of like workshop and career development. And we will also be having Danielle Henkel joining us. So you might know her from the, drag, the Quebec version of Dragon's Den. Um, she is a wonderful businesswoman who is a huge advocate of women in entrepreneurship. So that will be happening as the keynote in the evening. And yeah, I'm, I'm just, it's very exciting to be here and it's very fantastic to hear how tech is kind of going everywhere and infiltrating everywhere. And it's wonderful to see women kind of getting higher and getting that visibility that they really deserve. So yeah. So there you go, that is a jam-packed day. Uh, Women in Data Science, um, Women in Leadership Summit. Goodness me, you have your day planned for you. Uh, I want to say thank you so much for coming today and sharing more about your insight. Thank you for traveling so far and wide to come and share your insight and expertise. Uh, make sure, if you haven't done so already, go find out more about the Women in Data Science conference coming up as well. And of course, the Women in Leadership Summit that's happening. So all of that's happening. Thank you so much, Zainab, Zomaz, Alison, and of course, Nagar. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you stay tuned. Go check out techopia.ca. Uh, like us on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, we're everywhere. Make sure you're everywhere. Keep your finger on the pulse. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day.